Yo, real quick, real quick. Y'all see that back there? That's sunlight. The sun, yo, the sun is out. No more rain. At least till Tuesday. But you got this whole weekend to get your behind outside and get your groove on. If you want to do that to some old school hip hop and R&B, some throwback, catch me tonight, man. Bourbon Street, snap back. That's where I'm going to be at. I'm going to be at Bourbon Street, snap back tonight, man. Me, the dude that does what's in the box. I'm going to be on the microphone, be emceeing. So catch me, downtown Fullerton on Commonwealth, Bourbon Street Bar and Grill. Snap back is going down. We got DJ Beastang on the ones and twos. We got a Club Savage takeover. So, I mean, I think that's Jay Bird and Theo Tabora. I think it's going to be some ill folks out there. So, come catch up. Now, let's get into these stats. Let's go. What up, y'all? Welcome to another edition of What's in the Box Trek. Finally, 500. 500. 500. 500. We did it. Finally. Feels like all of us were involved in it. No, I'm kidding. Lakers, man. Good game. They got to 500. They beat OKC, which was also very important. So now that season series is tied, and it's based on record. So that's actually a very, very good thing. Now the Lakers have to kind of keep going and hold the conference record to keep uh, OKC at bay. Remember, just a little note real quick. Uh, seeding is based on, one, your record. Do you have more wins than the other team? Two, do you own the tiebreaker versus the other team? Three, if you're in the same division – do you have a better division record? Four, do you have a better conference record? So that that's the key. So if if all of those things tie out, if you have this, if you're tied in record with with gold with Golden State, you win. If you're tied in record with OKC, then it goes over to conference, you know, et cetera. So you guys see what I'm saying. I mean, I don't need to keep explaining it. Look, there's been a lot to say about before and after the trade. And a lot of what was said before the trade is actually kind of interesting when you hear the conversation about it because now all of a sudden these players that weren't lasers and were terrible players are now excellent players. Yay, they're so great. But those of us that have been watching all season and remember when AD was healthy, what this team did in November starts to lead into December and what this, this team holding it to 500 with AD out, then again holding it to near 500 post-trade team, to be fair, uh, when LeBron is out. Like this team is a quality team and has been since the very beginning, AD's health is the most important factor. That seems to be what puts you either over the top or keeps you in the middle or the bottom. Now, plays like this are why I never backed off of this team and the players that were here before the trade. Check this play out. Schroeder, they work the perimeter. Move it to Walker, and then he loses it. Gildas Alexander wants it. Schroeder has it. There's seven to shoot. There's plenty of time, and the Lakers rushed it. Now they throw it away. It's a fresh 24. What an effort by Schroeder. Two efforts by Schroeder. What? What's the box got? Replays now? We out here, fam. Big, big, big shout out to Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder has had some big games for the Lakers now. This, is it something that you expect every night from Dennis Schroeder? Well, he hasn't been that type of player most of his career. But what you can expect is hard work and effort. And that's what you're getting from Austin Reeves. That's what you're getting from Dennis Schroeder. That's what you're getting from a new pickup in Vanderbilt, which we'll talk about in a minute. That is what you were getting when Thomas Bryant was here. This, this team plays hard. And all they needed was a defender who could guard somebody, point guard, so maybe four, when AD is healthy so that there could be some coverage between that four and five spot from AD, et cetera. So where do I see that right now? Let's get into the stats. The Lakers win against the Thunder, tying up the season series two to two, 111 to 116. 111 points has been a theme, by the way, over the last maybe five or six games. I don't know what that means in numerology. But anyway, uh, 92 attempts from the Thunder, 91 from the Lakers. So that's fairly even. Uh, think about the Lakers' pace real quick. You'll hear them say that the Lakers are second in pace in the entire league, which is true because their pace was very, very fast uh, prior to the trade. But after the trade, they've dropped down to fourth. If you look at the last 15 games, the Lakers are fourth in pace overall. I think that's great. And I think that if you're really watching the game and you're not worried about what a player's hair looks like or whether he's so friendly or whatever goofy thing people are into, if you're paying attention to the actual game, what you'll notice is that the Lakers are a much better half-court team and a lot of the pace that was touted was actually touted because they were trying to cover up for the fact that they were a pretty bad half-court team. And that's reasonable. That's fair. LeBron saying there was no lasers was an actually interesting thing because LeBron, by volume, was actually the worst in volume and percentage. There were other bad shooters on the team. That's not, that's not a lie. But LeBron was actually taking five, six, seven, and going like one for seven, minus six and three-pointers. Mm, when he's shooting 30, that's pretty much a percentage buster. But now 
You have players that can spread the court. Austin Reeves playing starters minutes, playing more minutes. Dennis Schroeder is actually a threat. May not make everyone, but he is a threat. So now you have these people that can spread the court. D'Angelo Russell, of course, can definitely spread the court and give AD some room to work. I still don't like how high AD catches, but I also have a little bit of a note about that. I don't get into these type of things. I know I'm more of a stats person, but AD is not a lower body big man. And this is a, a kind of a conversation I've had with a couple of people. You can take a big man to 6'10", 6'9", 7 feet, whatever, and they are lower body big men, meaning they're stronger lower, lower body players than they are upper body players or leapers or athletes or what have you. AD's not like a come from box to box like, like Dwight Howard was able to do or, of course, one of the best ever to do it. Shaq will come block to block, lock that lower body down to where you can't pat, get past them or get around them, catch, turn around and shoot. AD can be pushed out. We all know that. We've all seen it happen. So what AD makes up for that in how he makes up for that, at least, is in athleticism. He gets a faster step on other people. He has a jumper. He can do things of that nature. If he was, a, I would like for him to become a little bit of a better passer. I'm not saying he's a bad one, but it would be nice for him to become a better one. And then he's basically unstoppable. Let's keep going, though, y'all. Forty-three percent from the field. Forty. Let's say forty-four. Let's be fair. Forty-four percent for the field for the Thunder. Forty-six percent from the field for the Lakers. So not the greatest shooting percentage. It's decent. It's decent, but it wasn't super great. Only 91 shots put up. The Lakers shot 34 threes. Uh, the, the Thunder shot 36. The game was played relatively easily, evenly. The Lakers shooting about 35%, which is what you want for the most part, is to be able to make enough to keep teams at bay. Early on in the season, they were falling in 25% some nights. You saw the other night where they fell in 25% and lost. You don't want to be in that below 30% shooting range. I understand that. But the Lakers have been hanging around 33 34% for most of the season, which is a, a reasonable way to give yourself a chance to win. And they're not a volume three-point shooting team. And when you notice, when the Lakers go on those scoring lows, they're putting up a lot of threes. And that's not just them. That's other teams in the league because I think OKC took some bad shots from three uh, last night as well. OKC got to the line 19 times. They made 17 excellent free throw shooting. 28. 20 for 28 for the Lakers. 71%. I don't know what's up with this free throw shooting. And it's a miss here or there. A front end miss. Not a back end miss. So usually it's kind of just not a concentration on the front end. The Lakers have to fix that. They did out rebound the Thunder. 53 to 45. 16 offensive rebounds, which is excellent. 20, uh, 37 uh, defensive rebounds. They beat OKC in the offensive rebound, rebounding category, 16 to 12. The best thing about that is that they gave they didn't give OKC too many more opportunities. Even though OKC had 16 points, uh, second chance points, and Lakers only had 11, they were taking away those second chance opportunities. This is what teams were doing when they were beating the Lakers. This you know the last couple games, Rockets did it the best. They just crashed and crashed and crashed and crashed and crashed. Now, there was no AD there. I get it. But Dallas did the exact same thing. Just crash and crash and crash and crash. Just keep the, the possession longer on their own end of the floor, keeping the Lakers out of a flow. That's exactly what they did. Speaking of a flow, 20 assists on 42 makes, 21 assists on 40 makes for the Thunder. I think that's pretty dope. 50% is, is fairly nice. Uh, getting into points off of turnovers and turnovers. Now, the Lakers only had 11 turnovers. The Thunder had 10 that's great, great, and more great for the Lakers and for the Thunder. Only giving up 10 points, the Lakers were, and 9 points, taking 9 points from the Thunder. Now, D'Angelo Russell turns the ball over quite a bit, but that's not unreasonable as well. AD was actually a big culprit in turning the ball over in those high turnover games as well. But when you're the, you know, turnovers are volume and possession. I actually think that four turnovers is perfectly fine for a player. Now, you might disagree with me, but that's one turnover a quarter. I'd say that the person gets to be a human being. Maybe they don't. Who knows? Uh, 54 points in the paint to 48. Slight margin there. I like this game. I like how the Lakers played this game and the last game, keeping control of the game from start to finish. But game ball goes to Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder. And the real key, if we're talking about the best of the trade, is Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is the player that I've been wanting this entire time that I kind of wanted Troy Brown Jr. to sort of become, but a player who can guard one to four, right? Guard your best player, play from the four spot, make it tough defensively. That's all I wanted. I was hoping that Gabriel became that guy. It's the one thing the Lakers didn't have. They had an excellent 
uh, guard defender in Pat Bev and a decent, sometimes great, sometimes not so great guard defender uh, in Westbrook who could guard all the way down to the center position because he was strong. But mm, I'd rather have Vanderbilt in that position because Vanderbilt actually can guard somebody one to four. Now, five might be a bit of trouble, but you have Anthony Davis out there, and that, that's a supporting position. You notice that Vandy doesn't get a super ton of minutes towards the end of the game unless there's a defensive assignment that's needed. So, look, y'all, this has been What's in the Box track. I'm super hyped. Once again, 500. The Lakers play again on Sunday. They got to win against the Bulls. They cannot leave these next two games on the table. I don't still don't know if the sixth spot is in, in flux, but I do got to give a shout-out to my dad. My dad said... Because I told him, like I told y'all, that the Mavericks were probably going to take six when I look at their record. But the Mavericks went out and lost to the Hornets, which my dad called. He said, well, you know, you're acting like the Mavericks are just going to be able to beat them. And apparently he was right. They weren't able to. So this has been a great, a great, great, great thing to watch. It's been an exciting season. I kind of like this. This is a little exciting. But you guys let me know in the comments how y'all feel. My name is Trek Life. This is What's in the Box Trek. I will holler at y'all. Peace.